A historic building here in Greenup County got hit pretty hard overnight by severe weather. A damage report from here coming up. Police say two three year old kids walk from this apartment complex all the way down this street and into this busy Richmond intersection without their caregiver even knowing. Breaking news. It is a shocking morning for the true blue nation as a UK athlete is arrested. Good morning everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Chris Suter. You're watching LEX 18 news at sunrise. A sexual assault investigation heats up. It happened early Tuesday morning. Now police are hoping a sketch will jar someone's memory as to who the suspect may be. The group of 35 or so loaded into a bus and hit the road around 4 a.m. to head to the nation's capital. Bullets fly in Lexington after an argument heats up Tuesday night. We've all had one of those days. Sleep the night before was rough. Getting through the day is tougher. You're tired, grumpy, and just feel all around crummy. Can you tell I work the morning shift? Well, Chris and Nicole, I can tell you that it has been a very scary morning for every single person involved out here today. And let's show you exactly why that uh, crashed police cruiser still sitting here on Winchester Road. Well, Kevin, the store is called Supermercado Aguas Calientes. The Aguas Calientes is translated in English as hot water. And after today's FBI raid, the folks here did find themselves in some hot water. His name is Steve Buttleman, and he's responsible for one of the most important parts parts of the race, the call to the post. Well, Kevin, as you might be able to tell, this is a pretty busy road for most of the day. It's hard to make a turn onto this road, even harder to cross it. But imagine two three year olds crossing the road. That exact scenario played out Friday morning. The details are in tonight's LEX 18 big story at six. Before the roof was on the ground, before people drove by this apartment complex, like it was some kind of Greenup County attraction. Oh, I was scared. I was scared, but I had to I had to hold myself together. Helen Wright sat in the apartment complex she's in charge of terrified. About 3.30, that's when the wind hit and it sucked the uh, uh, ceiling tiles in my bedroom up and that's what scared me. She looked outside to see wood and metal flying by and knew she had to move. I got out of bed and I'm like, OK, we got to get everybody downstairs. That was my first thing I thought of. So we got all the tenants downstairs and I took a head count to make sure everybody was OK. At that moment, it was until when we looked out, we was just like, oh, no, we just can't. We, we couldn't believe it. Believe it or not, this is not the first time severe weather has hit this property. Well, this building here that uh, you got here is the second building on the foundation. Uh, the first building was destroyed in 1937 flood. Total destruction avoided, thankfully, this time around. I thank God he kept us safe. Whether it's taking a ride or playing with their puppies, it's clear Bertha and Samuel Sutton have that unmistakable mother-son bond. He is very independent and very articulate. But all the things this mom loves about her little boy were almost gone in an instant. He was a couple of steps away from the driveway, so um, he had already made it just, you know, almost to the house, and um, I heard a... I heard a loud noise and I heard Chris yell, you know, oh my God. The door was open and I went out to see him laying in the road. Samuel had been hit by a car. I had to help him breathe um, and I just, I was melted to the, to the pavement. Um, and all you can think is, you know, this is just a nightmare. Every day after seemed to present a new challenge. From surgeries to, you know, respirators and monitors. Now finally, two big milestones, a special seventh birthday, and tomorrow for the first time since the accident, Sam will go back to school. He says, Mommy, I get to have friends again. And Bertha says they both know it will be hard, but if anyone has the strength to do it, it's Sam. If I've ever had a hero in my life, it's, it's him. Covering the news in Franklin County, Chris Suter, LEX 18 News. High above the crowd. It's awesome. Absolutely awesome. Six floors above the historic race. And it may be the most terrifying moment of your year, but it's also, without doubt, the most exhilarating. He's one of the most familiar voices in all of Kentucky, even though you've probably never seen his face. The Whooper comes by the wall. The Whooper has taken the lead. Galloping Domino tries to kick back to the inside rail. Mark Johnson is going into his third year as track announcer of the Run for the Roses. Of all the places in the world where I ever would want to be, it's there in that position at that moment, waiting for those gates to open. That certainly doesn't mean it's easy. Mark spends a lot of time prepping before each race he calls on Derby Week. 
The one always has red, the two is white, the three is blue, the four is yellow. Examining his color-coded shot sheet. So the rubber stamp with the outline of a jockey's silks and the silks I expect the jockeys to carry. Using his binoculars to get one last good look at the horses before they hit the track running. Galloping Domino goes in next. Followed in by Runaway Yankee. And when it's time... And they're off. Boy, is he on. The outside DeWooper comes by them all. DeWooper has taken the lead. With Gallop the enthusiasm and love for horse racing that makes Churchill Downs such a special place to be each year. This transcends a racetrack. And it transcends a sporting venue. It's, it's actually a piece of modern history. With coverage you can count on, this is LEX 18 News at Sunrise. A sexual assault in Lexington has police on the hunt for the man they say is responsible. Plus, the mother of a Lincoln County teen whose life was taken in a crash remembers her daughter. And police catch up with the man they say shot two people in Jessamine County. These stories and more are headed your way on this Wednesday. It's June 30th, 2010. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Sunrise. I'm Chris Suter. A sexual assault investigation heats up. It happened early Tuesday morning. Now police are hoping a sketch will jar someone's memory as to who the suspect may be. The woman told officers the man approached her at knife point, dragged her behind a Spencerian College building along Winchester Road and sexually assaulted her. She describes her attacker as a black man standing around six feet tall, weighing 190 pounds with an athletic build. The woman says the man was wearing khaki shorts and a baseball cap. If you have any information as to who this man is, give Lexington Police a call. We also have this information on our website. If you'd like to see it again, that's lex18.com. A Lincoln County mother is trying to find the strength to go on after her teenage daughter died in a crash. Police say 17-year-old Lenora Parker was riding with her boy for an 18-year-old Stevie Bolden on Kentucky 78 Monday night near Stanford. When officers say Bolden rounded a curve, lost control on a wet stretch of road, and slammed into another car, Parker's mother says her daughter was a lifelong cheerleader, a model, and a singer. Two more Kentucky-based soldiers were killed in Afghanistan. Now news of a third death. Army officials say 26-year-old Sergeant John Rogers died Sunday of injuries he received in an incident not combat related. Rogers was a member of the 101st Airborne Division based at Fort Campbell. Two other 101st Airborne soldiers died just two days earlier. On Friday, 27-year-old Specialist Jared Plunk of Oklahoma and 19-year-old Specialist Blair Thompson of New York died when their mounted patrol came under attack. Another Kentucky soldier who died in Afghanistan has been laid to rest. Staff Sergeant James Hunter was killed in an explosion. A funeral for the Lexington native was held at First United Methodist Church in Winchester. Sergeant Hunter was remembered as one of the best. Absolutely. Staff Sergeant James Hunter joined the Army in 2003. Officials say the Lexington native is the first public affairs officer to die in combat in nine years. The search continues in the Red River Gorge. Still no sign of that black bear that attacked a hiker over the weekend, which forced authorities to close down parts of the gorge. The victim, 56-year-old Tim Scott, suffered a mauled leg after the attack in Wolf County. He has since been released from the hospital. The Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources said it was the first recorded bear attack on a person in the state. Officials say it's policy to kill any bear that behaves aggressively toward humans. This is LEX 18 News at Sunrise. Coming up, the land down under gets a blast from Old Man Winter. In two minutes, we'll take you to Australia where the koalas are cold and the beaches are chilly. Plus, Tom has your LEX 18 Storm Tracker HD forecast.